Hi, and welcome back. So as you may know, the amount of senescent or zombie cells we have in our bodies increases as we age. And this is generally seen as a bad thing. However, this new study shows that a certain amount of zombie cells in our system is actually essential when it comes to aiding the healing process. Enough waffling off me. Let's jump into the presentation and let's see what it's got to offer. This is a review of a piece I read that was penned by Nicoletta Lanise, where she covers a new study that was published in the journal Science, which showed that some senescent or zombie cells can actually do good when it comes to activating anti-inflammatory responses to injury. And there are links in the description below to the study and the articles I used to put this presentation together. Zombie cells that contribute to age-related diseases also help heal damaged tissues. So wiping them out completely could come with major downsides. The zombie cells, scientifically known as senescent cells, are cells that stop multiplying due to damage or stress, but don't actually die. This is according to the National Institute on Aging. These zombie cells then release a slew of molecules that summon immune cells, and this in turn sparks inflammation. The immune system regularly clears out these zombie cells from our body, but with age, the system becomes less efficient, and as a result, the dysfunctional cells start to accumulate. This accumulation produces even more inflammation, which in turn contributes to the development of age-related diseases such as cancer, Alzheimer's disease and osteoarthritis. But zombie cells aren't all entirely bad. This new study conducted in lab mice and on human cells suggested that senescent cells help repair lung tissue after damage by encouraging stem cells to grow. Killing these zombie cells with dacetinib, a cancer treatment, and quercetin, a naturally occurring polyphenol, this drug duo that's been studied as a potential treatment to combat aging and age-related diseases, unfortunately, was also found to somewhat disrupt this vital repair system. T.N. Peng, MD, an associate professor of pulmonary, critical care, allergy and sleep medicine at the University of California, San Francisco said, we are not the first lab to implicate senescence as a wound healing process. A 2014 study in the journal Development Cell found that zombie cells helped mend wounds in the skin and that their repair can also be disrupted by senolytics. This suggests that using senolytics could come at a cost, so the drugs will have to be designed to block zombie cells' bad effects without disrupting their good ones. To find senescent cells in the lung, the researchers genetically modified mice to carry a glowing protein on the gene that codes for the protein P16, which is overactive in many senescent cells. Whenever a cell switched on the gene, it would also churn out fluorescent proteins and start to glow. The researchers used this technique to really amplify this signal, Professor Peng said, and thus reveal cells that carry low levels of P16, cells that might have otherwise escaped notice. Glowing cells appeared in the mice's lungs shortly after birth, and their numbers increased over the rodents' lifespans. These cells include fibroblasts, which make connective tissue, as well as making immune cells. They reside within a sheet-like tissue that's called the basement membrane. The basement membrane acts as a sort of gatekeeper. It singles out and blocks harmful chemicals and pathogens from entering the lungs. But at the same time, it also allows oxygen to pass unhindered into the bloodstream. The P16-carrying cells act as guardians of this crucial interface. After an injury, immune cells rush in to repair the damage and release a flurry of signals that call P16-carrying cells into action. The immune cells increase in number. The fibroblasts gush compounds that summon even more immune cells, which in turn spurs stem cell growth. 
Given the mice dacitinib and quercetin cut off this signaling cascade and thus prevented the growth of stem cells. This finding hints that, as seen in mice, drugs like dacitinib and quercetin could also disrupt this healing process in humans. Additionally, P16 carrying cells extracted from donated human lungs also promoted stem cell growth. Danny Raw, MD, PhD and Assistant Professor of Surgery at the Boston University School of Medicine, who was not involved in the study, said this combination treatment is currently in multiple clinical trials. And in general, scientists have been on the lookout for signs that senolytics disrupt healing. The new research suggests that this caution is warranted. Now, while some senolytics have been shown to hinder healing in the lungs and the skin, some labs have found that the drugs speed up healing in fractured bones. So is bone different from lung and from skin? Sundeep Kosler, MD, the leader of Mayo Clinic's Osteoporosis and Bone Biology Laboratory, who oversaw one of the previous bone studies, said, possibly in the lung and skin studies, researchers gave senolytics every day. But in the bone studies, there were longer breaks between the doses. This strategy may hit a therapeutic sweet spot where there's enough inflammation for repair, but not too much where you're actually starting to see negative effects. In terms of clinical development of therapeutics, the devil is going to be in the dosing. In an article posted in the U.S. National Library of Medicine, it states that senolytics are a class of drug that selectively clear senescent cells. The first FDA-approved senolytics are dacitinib, approved in the USA and in the EU as a leukemia treatment, quercetin, a plant flavanol, which is now available in supplement form, nevitoclax, an experimental anti-cancer drug, and fisetin, or fisetin, again a dietary flavonoid available in supplement form. Early pilot trials of senolytics suggest they decrease senescent cells, they reduce inflammation, and they alleviate frailty in humans. Clinical trials for diabetes, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, Alzheimer's disease, COVID-19, osteoarthritis, osteoporosis, eye disease, bone marrow transplants and childhood cancer survivors are either underway or they are just beginning. So the two cancer drugs that I've previously mentioned are not available over the counter. However, fisetin and quercetin are the most affordable options from reputable suppliers who third party test their products, in my humble opinion, come from Renew by Science and Do Not Age. Both companies also offer the 10% discount if you use the code MYNMN at checkout. Of course, there are many other suppliers who offer these two supplements. So feel free to investigate other options. And as an FYI, I'm regularly approached by other supplement companies, some of which at the time when they contact me don't even have a website asking me to endorse their products. Until now, I haven't found one that I would trust, but if I do, I will certainly let you know. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. So it looks as though in the study where senolytics were administered every day, that's a skin and the lung study, it seemed to prevent or hamper the healing process. But in the bone study where it was administered intermittently, it seemed to assist in the healing process. I currently take quercetin and fisetin, 2,400 milligrams a day, but only on the first second and third of each month. I'd be interested to see in the comments below, do you currently take quercetin and or fisetin? And if you do, what is your daily dosage or do you do the intermittent protocol where you take it a certain amount of days per week or per month? I'd be interested to see how you take your quercetin and fisetin.